Hey guys, I'm Alex from Zaxworks and welcome back to part two in creating wireframe materials inside of 3D Invigorator Pro. All right, so in this tutorial, we're gonna learn some advanced techniques on how to make some thicker lines, add more lines, add some reflections to your lines, and even add an image to the front of your lines, okay? So we have a lot to cover, little time, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is click on setup to open up the setup window. Now that we're in this invigorator setup window, we'll click on our text block, and the first thing I wanna show you is that this is still live text. We have just a material and bevel applied to live text, so I can change the text or the font at any time. So I'm gonna go ahead, double click on this guy, and even change the font to this black oblique right here. Click OK and you see you get an entirely different look except the bevel is exactly the same, your splits are the same, and your materials are the same. So it's nice, very easy for iterations and to keep things changing all the time. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is double click on this wireframe material to open it up in the material editor. Now, let's double click on here and change one of the horizontal colors. Let's change the horizontal color right here to something like gold or so. There we go, good. And then let's go ahead and click OK. And this is a really cool look. Now we have different materials on our horizontal stripes versus our vertical stripes, which means if you have a team with two different colors or you have a school that has two different colors or you have anything that has two different colors, you can put them in here and make them look really cool. Or if you have a team that has an accent color or anything like that, you can apply two different colors to your wireframe which is very new. You can't normally do that with wireframe materials. So that's a very cool feature. Okay, so that's part one. Good, so now let's go ahead. We're just gonna change both those colors to that gold. We'll double click here, click on our eyedropper and select that gold. Click okay and everything has updated like it should. Good, next part I wanna show you is that right here, our blue outline right here, we can change that color at any time. And we don't necessarily have to change it to the same color as the front text. So let me go ahead, I'll take this color, double click to load it in the material editor, and change this to a white color. Now, when I have this as a white color, look how easy it is to read our text, especially against this black background right here. But if I do view front, you can see this is really nice, super easy to read, and you can change this to any color you want based on the background. Very cool, right? Okay, good. Next thing I wanna show you is how to add reflection map onto your material, wireframe material. So let's go ahead, we'll load this into material editor, go down to the bottom, click on your reflection map uh, little icon right here, and then select our field airport pano. This comes with the resource files, by the way. So let's go down here and let's turn our map reflectivity up a little bit. And now, as I move through here with our camera, make sure your camera is selected, move through here, you can see that we have this nice reflection going through our text. Look at that. Very cool. Let's deselect and take a look. I'll even go to auto render. Let's do that. Let's move around. Very cool, right? Look at that. We've got wireframe materials with reflection maps. Awesome. Cool. Definitely something you can't do with other 3D programs. This is a very unique look. Okay. So now we have our cool looking material, except um, we wanna make a couple more lines. Let's go ahead and learn how to edit some of the lines itself. So I'll select my object, make sure that our material is loaded in, it should already be there, and then I will come up and double click to open up our grid editor. Now, these are the two things we're gonna take a look at, are the spacing and the width. So if I take the width up and I turn that way up, and I click OK, you'll see we have some nice thick horizontal lines. Very cool look if you want that, right? Look at this, you get some more reflections. However, instead of thick lines, I just want more lines, right? I don't want thick, I want more. What I'm gonna do is by decreasing the spacing. I'll decrease this guy, you get a lot more lines. Very interactive preview right here, right? Okay, I'll take this guy, at about 2.7. Click OK, and now we have nice, tileable, lots of lines going through our object, just like that. Look at that. Cool. OK. And now the more lines you have, it's going to be a lot better for reflections, because you'll catch a lot more reflections going through the lines, make it look a lot cooler, right? OK. Good. So now that we have that, let's go ahead to the next part, which is putting a material onto the wireframe lines itself. So we'll do that first by creating a shader, another shader, and turning this color shader to an image shader and selecting our rainbow image. Good, now we have the rainbow image as sort of a background, except I wanna make sure it, the lines cut out of this rainbow image. And I'll do that by selecting our RGB grid shader right here, doing Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC, selecting the alpha shader in the rainbow image, and do Control V on a Mac or Control Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. Sorry about that. And voila, there we go. 
I can delete this gold shader and there we go. We have our cool looking rainbow with our reflections all cut out, nice wireframe. Very cool. You can see right here that our image is being mapped onto each letter individually. However, I want this map being mapped across all letters. So what I'll do for that is there's a couple steps. So the first thing I have to do is click on front and I'll click on yes and we see the map is now mapped all the way across. However, there's a couple complications. The number one thing is that we have scale percent less than 100. This means it's going to tile our map. However, this map is not tileable. So we're going to have to go and reset that. And then now our lines are too thick. So we're going to have to go into our material editor our transforms of our alpha take our transforms and turn this scale way down let's go down to 30 or something click ok and make sure if you see these extra lines going through here you want to click on this little button right here give you preview texture and increase this guy to 1024 by 1024 click on set and there we go just like that we have cool looking textures all the way through our object with reflection maps and everything right looking good okay now that is the first half of things. So it looks really good. Now let's take it to the next level. The next level is, it still is a little jumbled with how many lines we have going through our scene, right? It's a little jumbled. So let's go ahead and figure out how to make it less jumbled. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to turn off the back sides of our object. This is why, let's zoom in here. And you'll see right here that we have the front lines right here and the back lines behind them. And this makes it very difficult when the objects are too far away from the camera, right? Okay, so the first thing, all we have to do for this is go into object controls, find back face and turn that guy off. And just like that, the back face has been turned off, makes it a lot more legible and easy to read. Look at that. However, here's a, here's a big problem. If you want your object to spin around, you want to see the backside of your objects at any time, you can't, right? You can't see those objects right there. It makes it look sort of weird. However, I have a solution for this. What we want is we want a special thing called hidden line. And the way we get hit a line nowadays in 3D Pro Animator is by creating an object that's a little bit smaller than this and adding a matte color to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our object is selected, come to Edit, Duplicate, now that we have that object duplicated, we'll come over to object controls, take our depth, bring it down just to seven, just make it a little bit smaller than the first words with the material on it. And then I'm gonna come over to my material editor, make a new material to matte color and apply that material to docs one and two. Click yes, and there you go. Just like that, when we click on, when we turn off auto render, you'll notice that there's these white, um, box that's inside our text now. That is the matte color, so we can see the matte color. However, when we turn on auto render, uh, those white colors go away just because that's just preview only, right? So there we go. Now we can see through our objects super easily, and it's nice, and look at that. Okay, we can even change the background color. Look at this, we can change the background color, and we'll still be, still be able to see through our objects super nicely. Okay, and with that being said, remember, we're still in After Effects the entire time. So if I want to go ahead, I click on OK, I bring this back into After Effects, I can throw a solid back here. New, solid layer, make sure it's the same size as my comp. Come over here and add a gradient ramp. Whoops, let's type in ramp. Pull this guy behind, and let's give it maybe uh, a radial ramp instead. Zoom out. Pull this guy down here change this I don't know let's, t let's mess around with it something like that okay and click OK and look at that so now we can see through our text at all times and it is ready to go okay so that's it for this two-part series of creating wireframe materials inside of 3d invigorator pro if you have any other questions you can email us or leave a comment below this video I'm Alex and I'll see you next time